All right, so the notion of it in a, of equivalent equations is actually pretty important for algebra, although it's going to seem pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but it's it's a lot more powerful than it might look. And I'll I'll try to show that, but I might forget at the end, so forgive me if I if I don't remember. Okay. So let's just let's just define it. The two equations are equivalent if they have the same solution. So let's back up and talk about what does it mean for an, an equation to have a solution? Well, solution, the solution to an equation is the value uh, that you substitute in for the variable that makes that equation true. So let's look at this guy, for example, 4x equals 8. Well, x is a variable. Uh, it's a symbol that stands for a value that, that we don't know yet. We don't know what it stands for. But we can find out what it needs to stand for in order for this equation to be true. So what this equal sign is claiming is that all this stuff over here is equal to all this stuff over here. So 4 times x needs to be the same thing as 8. So the solution to this equation would, of course, be 2 because 4 times 2 is equal to 8. Okay, so for an equation to be equivalent to this one, its solution needs to be 2 also. So let's look at this guy over here. What is the solution to this equation? Well, whatever x stands for, if we add 3 to it, it needs to equal 5. So, of course, here the solution is 2 because 2 plus 3 is equal to that's a weird 3 is equal to 5 so these equa these equations are equivalent because they have the same solution 2 x has to equal 2 all right so let's look at this equation down here and let's write an equation that is equivalent and there's an infinite number of equations that's that are equivalent to any given equation. So we can just we just come up with one. So first let's find out what the solution to this equation is. So whatever x stands for, if you multiply by 2 and subtract 3, the answer it has to be equal to 7. So I happen to know that if you multiply 2 by 5, 2 times 5, that's 10. And 10 minus 3 is, in fact, equal to 7. Yeah, so the solution to this equation is 5. Well, if I wanted to come up with an equation that's equivalent, it would just have to be an equation where the solution is 5. So, for example, I don't know, 3x is equal to 15. Well, the only value for x that makes this equation true is 5 because 3 times 5 is actually equal to 15 and you'll see as you move on with algebra that this notion of equivalent equations turns out to be pretty important it actually uh, is it allows you to solve equations so for example um, say I'm just gonna make up an equation 4x minus 2 is equal to equal to 14. What this allows me to do is to, if I follow certain rules like the addition property of equality, I can create a new equation here. So add two to both sides of the equation to create a new equation, and then and then I'm I'm following the addition property of equality here, uh, which you can learn about in, in separate lessons if you want. So, so I could actually write a new equation that says 4x is equal to 16 and I know that because I follow this rule appropriately I know that this equation is equivalent to this original equation so that if I find the solution to this one it's the same solution as this one and actually I can divide here divide both sides by 4 and I have x equals 4 and this equation is also equivalent to this equation, which is equivalent to this equation. So what's the solution to this equation? x equals 4? Well, of course, it's 4, because 4 equals 4. So that's a little, a little preview on, on the power of equivalent equations. But the, the main thing to remember for this lesson is 
two equations are equivalent if they have the same solution. If the same value for the variable, in this case x, um, makes the equations true.